My name is Blair Williams. Today is November 8th, 2018. I'm here today at the Cumberland County Historical Society with uh, Gail in Denver, Tucky. So first off, thank you for coming in today. And uh, I'll just, uh, I'll, ask, I'll start by asking Gail, um, uh, where, where were you born? I was born in Charmanstown. Okay. That's just down the road. Yeah. And how about you, Denver? New Cumberland. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier that you both uh, grew up in Enola, though. We went to school in Enola. Okay. Mm -hmm. He lived in Enola. And she lived in Over Somerdale. Okay. It's a little town above Somerdale. Yeah, just a railroad town. And was that, uh, was the, the school in Enola, was it a one room schoolhouse or? No, well, when, when I first went to first, second, and third grade, it was in Somerdale and it was a one room schoolhouse with a big pot belly stove right in the center. Yeah. Yes, and then in fourth grade, I was transferred to the Enola School District. And that was, that was a bigger school then? Oh, yes. Yes, it was a grade school, and then I moved on to the high school. It's called East Pennsboro now. Hmm. That was a, so was the town there, was it kind of, you mentioned it was a railroad town? Where I lived, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, it had, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a railroad on one side and a river on the other, and I was in between. And then was that the, uh, the Enola Rail Yard then? Yes. Okay. Yes. And how about you, Mr. Tucky? Well, it took me a long time to find her between the river and the railroad, <laughs> but I did. Yeah. I was, I was I, as I said, born in uh, New Cumberland, and we moved a few places around and finally ended up, my stepfather worked on the railroad mm -hmm. his entire life. And so he, we ended up moving to Enola and he could walk to work because we didn't always have a car. And then, so uh, that's when you started going to the, uh, the school in Enola as well? Pardon me. You started going to the school in Enola yes, at that time? Yes, I went to school in Enola. I really went to first grade in a little one-room school in Newbury Town. And then, what was the name of the other village there across the mountain? I don't know. I wasn't okay. there. <laughs> well, uh, it doesn't I, matter. But we ended up in Enola after two one-room schools, I think. Okay. Was, that's a long time ago, you know. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also uh, went to high school in Enola then? Yes. Yes, okay. went to high school in Enola, graduated. Both of us graduated from Enola High. Um, sort of, what are your, uh, sort of your, do you, uh, excuse me, do you know, so, uh, Gail Denver mentioned that his family sort of came to uh, Enola because of his stepfather's work. How did your family sort of settle in the area then? Well, my father decided he was going to build a house when we lived in Charmanstown. And um, this land became available, so he built a house for us and we moved up there. If I may interrupt, sure. it's interesting that he, he never owned the land that was railroad land, but he had a lease for a hundred years, mm. dollar a year. So uh, that's how that he went then for the price of the land. Besides that, he was a fisherman. Mm. He was also an auto mechanic and he just settled there opened a garage down in Enola. So that's how I got there. Well, I'm wondering, do you have a, what are your, what are the memories that uh, stand out uh, in your childhoods in Enola then? In my travels in Enola? Uh, sorry, childhood. Oh, my childhood? Yep. I didn't really have a childhood in Enola. Okay. I was up in Overview. And then I went to Somerdale to school to third grade. So it was fourth grade till I actually came down to Enola and went to Summit Street grade school. Mm. And of course, that's when I first met Denver. 
we were actually in fifth grade when we met. So we've been together ever since, which is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, so what was that? What was the neighborhood like? In Enola? Or, or, or Summerdale? Or? Well, I don't think I lived in any bad neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They were, you could let your doors open, your mm -hmm. windows on, unlocked, your car doors unlocked. It was just a great time of life. So, uh, the neighborhood in Somerdale was great. And then when we moved to Enola, you make friends quick. And it's, it was, and Carlisle's by far the best place I've ever lived. Hmm. People here are so friendly and giving. So. Well, I'm just wondering, was the, was it an open, I mean, like, uh, were there a lot of houses, or was it more uh, open uh, in terms of like nature, or? No, it, it, there was a lot of houses. Okay. And now it's built up even more. Hmm. And a matter of fact, the high school had was built. It's East Pennsboro now. Mm -hmm. That was built just about two, uh, two streets over from where we used to live. Hmm. So it's really grown up since I've been there. But there. That's the high school today, but the high school that we went to is now the township office. It's an administration building, hmm. and it's smaller. They build a great big school now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some of the schools I've seen locally, and they're all quite large. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nowadays, I think they're, that there's so many children. Hmm. Need, need to be educated that they have to make these schools. They're even combining schools and then you have to make something bigger. Mm -hmm. She uh, was a terrific athlete too. Oh. For, for her, she played basketball. And in those days they had six girls on a team, three forwards and three backfield. And they didn't pass the half halfway line. Now they play she the full court. On her backfield, she played center back. Okay. And That's called guards. I played the guards. Center guards, okay. And then uh, the other two were both almost six foot and her. But they, got, they rebounded the ball and threw it to her and she dribbled up and threw it to a forward forward and that was it but she you know she was softball hockey you know she played it all the sports they had she played uh, yeah, how about you Mr. Saki were you an athlete as well or yeah of, of sorts I mean I I ran track I played football I didn't play basketball <clears throat> and I didn't play I played football in my senior year, but I uh, didn't play basketball or, or I didn't even run track because my stepfather decided that when I was 12 years old and got a paper out that I could support myself. And so I had to bring in s some money there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just went to work and I, I just, Worked all my life. What? Well, how about you, Gail? Do you have any? Do you have any memories of playing sports? And oh know. yes, oh yes. Uh, I played everything I could get into, but being short, I start out with a disadvantage because they always want the taller kids. But I think if you work hard enough, you can be anything you want to be. So. Was that the case even with uh, hockey? Yeah. Ho hockey, I was a goalie. Okay. So I didn't have to, I just stood there and prevented the ball from coming sure. in, of course. But the hockey, sure. I loved all those things. And I, I'm just to clarify, this is field hockey? Field hockey. Okay. Yes. We didn't have ice, ice hockey back then. I didn't think so. Just to clarify. <laughs> All right. And what about uh, softball? What position did you play? A catcher. Okay. My wife plays catcher on our softball team. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So that's what I'm doing tonight. 
she was also a pretty good looking drum major. Wow. Majorette. I was pretty active in school. I That's that. Yeah, I had a good time. And then uh what about uh after after you graduated from Manila? What did you end up doing uh, we got married. We got married <laughs> almost immediately. You, when we went to school, it wasn't that you were educated to have a career. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're going back a few years here. And it, it's what, it, you were to get married, you were to have a, a husband, take, have children, take care of the home, and the women didn't work then. Mm -hmm. the, the, if they did, there was very, very few. So um, that's all. That's what we were excited about. So we've been married a long time. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering. So actually, did Enola have a lot of uh, like dances, or did you did you go out to Carlisle or Harrisburg to go dancing or anything like that? No, we usually had school dances. That was okay. about it. And at lunchtime, we had this little lunch place that some kids would go there and have lunch and maybe dance a little and, or whatever, because we didn't have that long for lunch, mm -hmm. but it was just a couple steps from the school. But other than that, we stayed local. So I was thinking back to an interview I did with some Carlisle students, and I guess there was a couple of dance halls in town that were chaperoned, but they, they always went out to... She liked roller skating. Okay. Tell him about that. Well, I, we, we went to a Lee Moyne roller rink when we could find somebody to take us, mm -hmm. my sister and I. Um, you had nothing. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I know uh, some of the interviews I've done of people from Mount Holly, they also seem to enjoy roller skating. That was a big thing. Over there. Well, so see, I, I did all this when we lived in Enola. Mm -hmm. When I came up here, I had children and I was involved in school and everything. So, um, but my kids, I don't recall our children going out of town to dances and things like that. They of course, they might have <laughs> that I don't know about. But, um, but when I lived in Enola, no, we stayed pretty local. The kids were home. They didn't run around like they do now. <laughs> well, so you mentioned that um, you, after you graduated high school, you got married. And then how quickly did you come to Carlisle after that? Well, seven years, seven years you came. Seven years after we were married. Mm -hmm. You came in 59. That's right. You, you bought, right. Uh, you worked for Frank Black. Yeah. So, as an estimator. Hmm. I was, I spent, actually, I spent, uh, I, I worked at a lot of jobs. I worked at a body and fender shop. I worked making lady finger donuts, bringing them out of the oven. I worked somewhere else and somewhere else. I worked at uh, a steel company that was called Central Heron and Steel in Harrisburg. And, uh, you know, it, it was tough work, but it's the first time I ever made a dollar an hour. <laughs> you know, it was that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, I found this uh, advertisement in the paper to come up here and, and uh, do one thing, uh, learn how to estimate jobs. And in learning how to estimate jobs, I didn't stay that very long. It was about two, three months until Frank made me superintendent of the company. Wow. Which, you know, I was still in my 20s. And uh, one of the, the biggest job we ever did at that time, it probably, I don't know what year, the courthouse was built, but that was the biggest job, you know, and that was my introduction to big time work, because <laughs> we were doing housework before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's when I settled down, but 
I settled down uh, supervisor of, of the work. And since we, it's, when I did that, we introduced to Carlisle uh, 24 hour service, you know, if your furnace went mm -hmm. out. And they didn't believe that. When I, I was shocked when I came to Carlisle on uh, Tuesday, the secretary said, so and so's furnace is out. And I said, well, we'll have to get someone down there right away. He said, no, he said, as long as you get here by Friday. So they went without heat for two, three days, you know, before. It was a different world. You went into, you left uh, Camp Hill and came to Carlisle and you were in the country. That was a country trip. Mm -hmm. It was 18 miles, I guess, from our shop down there in, to, to Carlisle. Uh, so, but then we, we kind of fell in love with Carlisle and and the opportunity come up, we bought the company, but it was a one-time sale, though. It, uh, his, Frank's son, Steve, had another company right beside us, really, but it was not part of what I ever owned. It, he, mm -hmm. just, he closed up and sold out. Well, I'm just thinking, uh... I, you know, I mentioned I spoke with uh, Frank's brother, uh, Bob. Yeah, Bob, Colonel Black, a, a couple times, and I'm just thinking to some of the stories he would tell me about his brother. You know, uh, driving around town in a, in a car, and yeah, I guess he, he liked to uh, lift weights. And I'm wondering, what, what were your impressions of uh, Frank Black? <laughs> Frank Black was an interesting person. Yeah. He. Uh, he could get angry. Bob was pretty sh too. Did he ever tell you about, he worked for us for a while and mm -hmm. we put him on collecting bills. <laughs> he had one guy that didn't pay his bill and so Frank got up at five o'clock, or Bob got up at five o'clock in the morning, went out, come back at about 10 and he had the money. <laughs> I said, how'd you get the money from him? He said, I just pulled right up against his garage door. He said he wasn't going to pay because he wasn't happy with the job. He said, I just told him, well, how are you going to get your car out of the garage? <laughs> Did he tell you that? He did not, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was on him, that's why. But anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Well, I was, yeah, just uh, some... Your impression Frank, of, of Frank. Frank. Yeah. Frank was uh, Frank was a wonderful dancer. Hmm. We, the Chamber of Commerce took a trip to Florida one time. In those days, the men used to take two-day trip or three-day trip, or, and so uh, we took a trip to to Florida. And uh, one night. We went to a nice, re I guess you'd call it a restaurant, and uh, but they had a dance floor there. And they had a dance instructor there the night we were there, a lady. And she was doing some dances and showing us how to do this and that and the other thing. And the, uh, the main thing, was to get us to go up and dance, which she got nobody. Looking at me and saying, well, what about some of these young guys and stuff like that. And so I said, Frank was sitting beside me, I said, I have a guy here that's a really good dancer. And so we talked Frank into going up. And uh, when he was done, he danced with her. When he was done, she said, can I come to your place and have some lessons? Because you sure taught me a few steps. But he was a, he was a good dancer. We went to a classes he had one semester, didn't we? He had ballroom. He taught us ballroom dancing. Mm. Very a good dancer. But he was he's, he's strange. He was for a while he was 
spoken of as the guy with the pink Cadillac. Yeah, I don't know if Bob told you that or not. But oh, he might have. He mentioned that he, he yeah. had a car that he, that he really liked. Yeah. He'd drive around town. Yeah, in the pink Cadillac. One of those big, long jobs. Yeah. You know. uh, he did things very cheaply. Hmm. And, uh, and we were friends. But he, he kept pushing the, it over onto me to make the decisions and stuff. And I remember one time, one of the, matter of fact, the bank on the square by St. John's Church was, uh, we were there doing something, I don't know. I don't know what it was, some kind of uh, work. And, uh, We had a little bit of trouble with them. They gave a job in Carlisle. The bank, the bank was owned by a bank in Harrisburg. They gave a job in Carlisle that really should have been our job. This was our bank and all that kind of stuff, you know, and they said, that's tough. Their decisions are made there. So I said, all right. So I pulled our money out of that bank and took it across to Dolphin bank where Dolphin used to be across from Farmers mm -hmm. and uh, they sent their uh, vice president from Carlisle or from Harrisburg and two executives from Carlisle and they were going to talk me into you know this and that and I said no you know you did your thing I did my thing we both did our jobs and so they took uh, Frank out to dinner and they told him their purpose for doing it was to get the money back in there again. And he said, did you talk to Denver? He said, no. Or yes, we did, but we didn't make out at all. And Frank says, well, his decision is my decision too. He's in charge, he makes it, the decision. And I thought that was a, pardon me, a commendable thing to do, because a lot of, people would say, well, since you came to see me, and you know, all this kind of stuff. But that's the way Frank was. Uh, did a lot of work, a lot of jobs with him before we, uh, and I gained a lot of experience. I mean, we did, I told you about the courthouse. Uh, we put the, the ventilating system in the, uh, in the Allegheny Tunnel when it was put through. And uh, most people didn't know, don't know, that the tunnel's going through out there. There's cars and stuff, service trucks and cars in the second floor above that under the mountain. And it's, it's an interesting thing. So that pretty much describes Frank I mean, he, he uh, of course, got cancer. Mm -hmm. That's what made him decide to sell the business. And, uh, and when he left, when, when it was, the deal was all done and everything, he told me one time that he, he really appreciated my being there because he said, I don't think I'd, could have kept the business without you. And I, I thought that was pretty good. What was the name of the business before, before you bought it? What, the name of it? Yeah. Okay, the, his company was Frank Black Incorporated. We started another company called Mechanical Services. Mm -hmm. And that, was the name of the company that I bought, Mechanical Services. Steve bought the rest of it, or got the rest of it, or whatever. Uh, and Frank Light Incorporated ended up, I know there's a lot of stuff in between, I mean, fights with the union, uh, and all that sort of thing. She can tell you that, you know. 
but we ended up winning because my son has made a pretty good company out of it today, a pretty sizable company. And it's known now as? Tucky Mechanical Services. Okay. Tucky Mechanical Services, Tucky Restoration is another company he has, uh, Tucky Metal Fabricators, and 3T, that's the four companies. The 3T is he and his two sons, and they, they own a bit, a good bit of uh, housing or commercial units around and sell them. I don't think the boys will ever be what <laughs> myself and their dad, my oldest son, worked in the field. We did, you know, I, I always considered sitting on the desk a chore, you know. <laughs> you didn't give me a, a, a promotion, you gave me another chore to do. Sure. Sounds like my father. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you, Gail? Do you have any memories of uh, Frank or that time of the, the business? Well, yeah. Uh, Frank was a big part of Denver's life, so I joined in there with he and Ruth were good friends. They were good. Um, Ruth was Frank's wife? Yes. Okay. Ruth. She, did she die? She just died recently. I thought so. But uh, I worked at Carlisle Hospital, so I had my sort of life, my career. When my kids got in high school, I went to work. So I decided, you know, to venture out. So then I wasn't as involved in everything that he was doing. But What did you do at the, uh, the hospital? I worked, I worked in what they called the business office at that time. Payroll, mm -hmm. accounts payable, receivable, in that. I, I worked there a long time, and a great place to work. Mm -hmm. It's not as big as the hospital is today, mm -hmm. but I think it was on Parker Street. Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot of beautiful homes built in there. But, um, That's only part of what she did because she had uh, Cub Scouts. Oh, Her I was a other guy uh, had Cub Scouts, and yeah. she had uh, VBS Vacation mm -hmm. Bible School for the couple different churches. She stayed active. Well, you have to when you have a husband that works twelve hours a day. You know, you have to do things like that. Well, you mentioned uh, you have the, your one son who is now sort of running all the, the various businesses. Uh, did you have any other children, or? We had three sons total, mm -hmm. and they all work at the bit at the business. Okay. They work in different areas. Um, they all do. They all excel in different things. Mm -hmm. So one's a foreman. One works in the sheet metal, and then Ken sort of runs the show. He. Matter of fact, he owns it now, and he's, he's the boss. And I still hear all the, the problems of work. I thought when he retired, I wouldn't have to listen to it anymore. Yeah. But Yeah. I retired when I was 63 and a half on paper, and I quit working when I was 79. Nine. So, I worked overtime, <laughs> you yeah. might say. Well, I'm just wondering, so what was it like raising three, three sons in? in oh, oh. You, want, you, need you to hear really want to know. You, you need to hear this from them, because all three of them say, Mom, you had such a life. We treated you like a queen. We never did, disobeyed. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, not how you remember it, though? Well, yeah, I remember it as a fun time until they got a certain age, and then I no longer controlled them. And uh, so I, we had some rough periods, growing up times, and but we worked them all out. And I have three wonderful sons, and they ha they're they're married. Well, two of them are married. They have great families. 
So somewhere along the line, I feel as if I did a good job. Yeah. We did a good job. <laughs> Those great grandchildren are the ones that are. Oh, I have the can't best. Keep up with I them. have the best grandchildren and great grandchildren in the whole world. Of course, that's what all grandmas say. But and they are, they're just. They are, all of our sons have good hearts, and they're very caring men, and they have raised their children to be likewise. So we're very proud of them. Do they live locally then? Or they, they probably if they help yes. business. Mm -hmm. So you get to see them quite a bit then. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little too much. No, <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But um, no, yeah. it's it's one of those situations where you're so happy to see him coming and glad to see him leaving. Sure. But we just love them to death and they're good people. Well, uh, Mr. Tucky, you mentioned working on the, uh, that, the Allegheny Tunnel and the, the courthouse. I'm wondering if there are any other jobs that, that stand out to you. Well, uh, yes, I, I working now after I retired and in the field, mm -hmm. but working for him, uh, remodeled the Molly Pitcher mm. Hotel the first time. Was uh, that after you retired? Or yeah. Or right before? Yeah. The last one I did was the, the apartment building in New Cumberland. The for, Iroquois. For the, yeah, for the county money thing. County owns a lot of property. Mm. And yeah, I did that one. I was trying to think. Centenary. See yeah, how the centenary building, you know. It burnt down, didn't it? The one, it? it was right across from the Hamilton on okay, yeah, the yeah. street. It, yeah, it, it burnt down. And, and, and actually, when the fire was, the fire department called Ken and asked him to come in and work with them on <coughs> structural, mm -hmm. you know, what walls should be, they just bulldoze down and what walls. And so Ken got involved in it and now he owns those buildings on the corner. He owns a corner building, he owns the apartment building mm -hmm. and he owns, what's another store in there? Chocolate store or something. Oh, the candy store uh, is right in the corner. Loose. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, well, that's all one building, I think, and he just rents out, and then he has apartments upstairs. It's a beautiful place. But he so. did a county home uh, in Newville. That was a church that he no. turned into it. No. This is before that. Before he oh. was involved in it, we did that. Two, 233 going to the mountain at home. So oh, yes, yes. Then Ken bought the, uh, the bank on the square mm -hmm. corner or whatever, and the church beside it and made some really nice homes. They don't have the finished, it's hard to sell a used bank. Um, yeah. You know. You're so limited, and if you're going to remodel it, getting those old safes out of there is mm -hmm. is a big deal. So, but I I remember uh, standing across the road when the big fire was the department store. Uh, what was oh, it? Huh? Bowman's. Bowman's. Bowman's, yeah. Yeah. I, I happened to be working late that night and I saw the goings on, so I went up and parked and walked down. And, but I lived in Enola, so that was early in our, in my education. <laughs> I remember that fire, that was a big deal. Actually, one of the questions that I, I, I like to ask people who have been in the area for a long time is uh, if you have any uh, sort of recollection of Hurricane Agnes or maybe how it impacted you, or maybe it didn't. 
What year was that? I believe it was 72. I remember, I have some pictures of it at home, and what? I remember it's a horrible thing. What? The fire? Agnes. The hurricane oh, Agnes. Agnes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I only lived up here 11 years. You were up here a little longer than that. When yeah, that well, happened. We, we got the uh, one I, part of that I remember, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Down in that end of town, uh, they used to store all their paper goods, napkins, and stuff in the basement. Mm -hmm. Well, they were floating across the frog switch and all around, wow. you know. Uh, and they found a different way of storing their stuff now. <laughs> but that's the worst flood that we had, mm -hmm. uh, as far as damage and stuff like that. Good Lord takes care of us because every time one comes this way, it goes that way or goes that way. Mm -hmm. And we don't really get a lot of stuff, although we got a lot of water this year. Got a lot of rain. Well, yeah. But that, that, one of the companies that Ken has is called Restoration, mm -hmm. which is restoring water damage, mold, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And uh, and we get, every time there's a flood, does it? everybody at the company is out pumping water or uh, busting walls open so you can get uh, the mold out of the walls. Mold gets in the insulation, mm -hmm. you never get it out without taking the walls off. And, doing it right, so. Well, you know, I'm wondering, you know, so you bought the, you know, you took over the company, you bought it from Frank Black. I'm guessing you grew it quite a bit. And now I'm wondering, what, what, what's it like to see your son or your sons take over and, and continue the business? Well, it, there's two sets of sons. Mm -hmm. Ken is one. And Pete and Mike are the other two. There, Pete is probably the best technician mm -hmm. type thing in, uh, in the county. I would put him up against anyone. But he, he did some of the things that I used to do. They didn't have instructions. Mm -hmm and booklets and stuff you can study and technology and stuff like that. They didn't have that. They were coming into it, but they didn't tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. So Pete did what, what I used to do, which is get a, a part, take it out of the box, and there's instructions in there. Take them home, study them the night before, and then when you go out, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. But that was the way to do it. That's the way the old timers did it. And uh, Ken, Ken's just a brilliant guy. Yeah. He's he's uh, he can do everything. He even knows how to make money. <laughs> No, it gets involved in, and, and uh, oh, another job that I did too that I forgot about is the Republican State Headquarters in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. It's on State Street, and a block. Mm -hmm. You can see the Capitol from there. and. Uh, we got that job and we did the, the construction work and the whole thing and that was an interesting year. <laughs> but that was an interesting job. That's as close as I want to come to a bunch of politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what year was that? Oh my. That had to be... A long time ago. Well... In the 80s, maybe? Nine? I was going to say, it's, it's, I don't think it's 10 years. I think it's maybe eight, seven or eight years ago. Oh, I don't, it was in the 2000s. 
or no. It was, that's right, I was thinking of from 2000 back. I'm a little slow sometimes. Yeah. As am I. Well, so been about, about it's, then? it's leftovers from a stroke I had some time ago. Sure. And sometimes I have to think a little harder. And when she's along, she can tell it. If I can remember it. But anyway, uh, that, was, that was an interesting job up there because people that aren't in around construction and stuff like that mm -hmm. don't see the construction entirely. They see only the finished product. When's it getting done? Well, we have this to do. I don't care about that, just when's it getting done? You know? And I'm not anti-politics, don't get me wrong, but politicians. I'll tell you an interesting thing that I lived through in my career. We only had, uh, Frank had 11, 11 employees when I went to work for him. Mm -hmm. And so after I got to be a superintendent, then I was in charge of hiring. And someone told me something one time I never forgot. So uh, I started hiring. Instead of getting experienced guys mm -hmm. who helped to close a window somewhere and that gave them experience, instead of getting that kind of guy, I hired farmers, mm -hmm. and my theory still holds good today. A farmer doesn't break anything that can't be fixed. They fix everything that breaks. They figure out they, if they have to have a special tool, they can make it. And they're valued to a company, but that takes time. But uh, we did, Ken's heaven two or three or four more people that ended their career there, you know, retired. So when you, when you retired and, or stopped working when you were 63, how many people did, how many employees did you have then? I don't, I don't know. I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. We used to, uh, I got to know some people not like Ken does, but I got to know some people. And I got introduced to George Leader when he was building these Leader nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And he had a general contract from Chambersburg. Uh, I forget his name. Anyway, he, he did the job and we did the mechanical. Mm -hmm. And we did them in Allentown, we did them in Washington, Pennsylvania, we did it outside of Pittsburgh. We, we went where he was going to build one and, mm -hmm. and, and did the work. And uh, what was your question? I don't want to get off of it. I uh, know, well, I was going to ask, uh, so you, when you started with Frank, there were 11 employees. I, how many yeah. employees when you retired? Yeah, there, there was a time during this time where we had all these jobs going around <clears throat> and we didn't hire people that weren't local. Why hire someone here and send them to Bethlehem, you know, or mm -hmm. someplace like that? So uh, there was a time when we had 125 people working. Wow. And, uh, but we got, we got away from that. Now mm -hmm. Ken does pretty much the same thing. He'll, and the contractors are more friendly. There's uh, some contractors in York that they trade people on. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if this business is slow and they just got a job down there, they'll call and say, can I get this kind of person, this kind of person for a year or six months or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, which I think is great because there aren't that many young people developing blue collar jobs. Mm -hmm. And believe me, blue collar jobs, if you're in New York City, you wouldn't want to be a supervisor. You'd want a, 
an electrician. You know, electricians were making $35 an hour. That's pretty good. Well, do you know if, uh, if Ken had, or, or maybe you had any relationships with the, the Votech school or with the, the local schools? Oh, yes, I got a good one. I forgot Al Keller. I wanted to hire someone, and they said, you ought to, you ought to see the tech school down in Reading. Mm -hmm. They had a good one. So I went down and hired two guys. One didn't, well, they put him through the tech school. One didn't uh, stay with us. He got an offer of more dollars. And the other one not only stayed with us, he worked his, it's the only place he ever worked. He worked his entire job. He wow. retired at uh, 65 and uh, and was a, was a really good guy. So uh, that's my experience with with tech schools. I've had some other experiences, but none so outstanding as that. Because he worked for us fifty years. We had the secretary that uh, I I don't know how I found her, but. She was working out in Mount Holly at, at the uh, technical school out there, not school. The Crystal Plant. Crystal Plant. And uh, she came with us at 18, and she was a kid. She cried if she heard someone swear, and, <laughs> you know. But uh, two years ago, she retired, and we had a dinner for her. It was, uh, 50 years. Do you remember, what was her name? Sharon Glass. There was a big write-up in the paper about her a couple oh, okay. of awesome years fun. ago. And then what was the, the gentleman's name that you... Al Keller. Al Keller, okay. Al Keller. He was a really nice guy and he, he, he had a bad experience that we helped him through and and he took it pretty good, but his, his uh, father was dead. Mm. And his mother worked somewhere and she walked out to meet someone on the main road. They picked her up and she rode to, to work with them. And uh, he was coming to work after she had left to see, uh, oh, and he stopped to see an accident because he thought it might be someone he knew mm -hmm. and it was his mother and she was dead. Mm -hmm. And that's a, and then I had another employee one time that his son, he lived on B or one of the streets here. And he had a couple of kids and they were, they'd run out in the road and not watch what they were doing. Well, the one was hit and he was killed and I ended up, that's early, that's when we lived in Enola and I came up, Lee called and wanted to know if someone, could I come up and spend the night with him and his wife, which I did. But that wasn't, that wasn't the easiest night I had it <laughs> work. Yeah, imagine. Hey, well, I, so you, you mentioned, uh, Vacations before we started talking. Uh, is there anything I should know about vacations, or did you have some good vacations? Uh, did George Gardner tell you anything about any vacations he he would have had with us? I uh, I he he mentioned a few vacations that he did. But I, I don't know if they. You ought to tell him. A, you ought to tell him that. Yeah, I think. George owned a <laughs> hotel motel mm -hmm. in uh, Jamaica. Jamaica. Did you know that? I, I think so. I, yeah, he probably mentioned it. Yeah. And one time, a group of us here in, in Carlisle got together and we go to see George's place. So we went down there for 10 days or something. And uh, it was a nice, pretty nice hotel and it had a, a what do you call it, a night. Like a bar with, yeah, well, with the what dark the bars? What the downstairs, yeah, what the downstairs was. Uh, it had a stage and 
for mm -hmm. singing and dancing and stuff. And then they had a, a at the back of the building, they had a dartboard up. Mm -hmm. And uh, another guy and I, guy lives here in Carlisle, he, uh, we start throwing darts. Well, George came down. What are you doing? What are you doing? How, how can I could do that? Well, you can if you want in on the deal. We have a deal going. Oh, that's okay. I'm in on it. I'm in on it. Well, he couldn't hit the dartboard half the time. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up, we beat him every game, you know. Yeah. The next day, we were going on a tour of the island, and he was sitting in the back, at the back of the bus, and I must have been the last one on, but there was no seats back there. They yelled, and they said, we don't have any seats back here. So I sat up by the driver, and everybody just, you know, boring drive, and yeah. so I said, to the driver, I said, do you have a microphone? He said, yeah. I said, can I use it? He said, yeah. I said, hook me up so the whole bus hears it. So I started oh, telling some jokes and a couple of things like that. And then I said, I, I have a news flash for you. I said, how many was down at the dance hall or wherever it is? And. Uh, they mostly all were. I said, did you see Bill and I throwing darts? Yeah. Did you see who interrupted us? Yeah. He said, well, he's quiet this morning because of what happened. He didn't know it till later, but we bet the hotel on that <laughs> game. The winner of the hotel, or winner of the game is going to have the hotel, or a part of it. And you know that caught on, and about two, three days later, George's man down there that took care of the place had a problem, and so he called a meeting, <laughs> and he called Bill and I and George <laughs> and him. And George said, what are you doing here? I said, well, we own half the building. <laughs> and he just went along with it, you know. That, that was an right. interesting thing. Then, and he had a serious problem because they had a storm down there and they had, what they didn't realize, they had some underground lines that were broken and leaking. But mainly his trouble was the commodes themselves, you know, were leaking through. Mm -hmm. And he was, his water bills were pretty hefty. So we got a vacation out of that. He called me month or two later, he said, you and Gail want to go back to Jamaica? I said, I don't know what's to do there. He said, I need you to help me find the problem. So we went back and it was very, very nice. He even, he even bought the dinner for us on our wedding anniversary. And uh, Bill, I think the guy's name that worked for him was Bill. But anyway, it was it was hilarious. <laughs> and <laughs> I told him, I said, if you have enough money, we'll if you have enough money, we'll uh, sell you <laughs> the place. That was right after he sold his uh, stock. TV stock. Oh, the cable company. The cable company. Sold the cable company for, I think, $70 million, something like that. Of course, he's spent it all now. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. That. I just said, he doesn't Only spend Only kidding, things. George. <laughs> George. No, yeah, yeah. George was in Florida. He yeah. had a place in where was it, Clearwater? I don't remember. He, had a, he has a place down there. But uh, his wife told me one time, she said, he's crazy. Said he saw a shirt in the window and he went in there and looked at it 
and tried it on and liked it. And she said he tried, she tried it on right out there in the hallway, didn't go to a room for changing. And uh, someone came over to help him out. And he said, do you have any other shirts like this? Oh yeah, she said, we have different colors and stuff. And it ended up, she says, I think we have about 30 or 40 of them your size. He said, I want them all. <laughs> he took them all. His wife says, all he does is wear the same color shirt day in and day out. <laughs> but they're clean. Yeah. That, that's, that's, a, that's a secret. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Was this uh, Elizabeth or? Elizabeth. Okay. Well, I mentioned at the, the start that, well, actually, let me, let me ask you this, too. So, what advice would you, you give someone who, who is starting out? You know, maybe I gave real good advice. Yeah? And I'll tell you what it was. I was given good advice when I was pretty young, and it was, you know, do what it says in the Bible, help one another, help your community, do give and that kind of stuff. And I did, and she can tell you, I, I've been in every nonprofit association here, Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. United Way. Matter of fact, uh, I still, well, I always have that record. I was the first chairman of United Way fundraisers to uh, the first one to bring in a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, well, I guess that's, that's it. But I was in everything. I was chamber, I mean, uh, YMCA and all, all those things I, I have for 20 years. And uh, I told this fella, he's, he has a business in Carlisle, and he came to me one time, he said, I want to find out how you came to Carlisle and got involved in so much stuff and, and worked with so many people. And, and I said, and got work from those people too? He said, yeah. I said, okay. He said, the advice I'll give you is join as many uh, nonprofits and really help them mm -hmm. that you can. Because you'll find that they're, they're, they're going to be asking you, will you sell this? Well, yeah, can I come over and look at it? And stuff like that. You don't have to be out there twisting arms. Mm -hmm. You have to be involved. And I think that still works good mm -hmm. today. I was on the board at the uh, YMCA this happened at. We had a board meeting. And uh, a new guy just to come on the board was sitting there beside me and I didn't know him and I won't mention names because I, he was okay, he's a friend of mine. But he sat there and the first time he, he, he said, I'd like to get to know this person, that person. I'd like to get to know you better. I'd like to do this, all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, you're really getting involved, aren't you? No, he said, I just want to get on so I can go to a couple of meetings and people get to meet me and then I'll quit. I said, I don't really, if you want my advice, I, I wouldn't waste my time. Because they'll know you're not interested. You won't do anything. So I've learned from here and from there. I've learned another thing too. Just because you're 85 years old doesn't mean you don't have anything to learn. Mm. You have something to learn every day. 
That's why I enjoy this job, because I get to learn all sorts of stuff every day. Yeah. So. You'll get a lot of stories and a lot of... And some yeah. things good and some things bad. Most of them true, but <laughs> there is a little cliche that I have. Yeah. It says, the longer I lived, the better I was. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people cling to that. <laughs> I am thinking of a quote that my colleague always likes, uh, Winston Churchill, you know. Um, I'll paraphrase, but it's something about how, you know, I, I, I plan to I plan to look good because I plan to write the history. <laughs> so. Yeah. What about you, Gail? Do you have any advice for people starting out or? I, I just think get involved, mm -hmm. keep busy. But, but a lot of the women are in the, their careers now. Mm -hmm. And I was working, so I didn't have a lot of time. But anything my children were involved in, I tried to be involved in. So that was about my limit. But you know, they say behind a good man is a good woman telling him what to do. Yeah. So I was there <laughs> telling him what to do. Is that what you're doing when you're talking, telling yes, me what to yes, do? Yes, that's it. <laughs> well, one of the last questions I always like to ask is, um, now that we've been talking for a while, um, just sort of, how, how has the, the county and maybe Carlisle changed since your, your first memories of, of the area? County, Carlisle, jobs, contractors, and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't see how any other century can have more progress in moving forward in technology than we live through. I mean, we really live through uh, a lot, not that we're old. I have a great grandson when he was four, he's 14 now. Andy Carson? Yeah. 13. 13. 13. He, he said to me one time, he said, Pap, my daddy's getting old. Now his daddy's my grandson. Yeah. And I said, well, what do you mean he's getting old? Well, he's getting old, he's slowing down, he's getting old. I said, well, if you think your daddy's getting old, what do you think about me? He said, you're not old, Pap. You're, he said, you're not getting old, Pat. I said, oh? He said, no, you are old. <laughs> so. Well, old to a child could be 30. Yeah. No, but it has, it has changed not, I've lived through, I had, had some friends who <laughs> used to be a doctor here, a dentist, <clears throat> and we did a lot of things with them when they, couldn't drive, couldn't see anymore, we'd take them places and stuff like that. And uh, and she just, she had a tough time. They lived here longer than we did. They were here when we were here. But she got angry when her church remodeled the platform area. She got angry when such and such a restaurant closed. She got angry, you know, nothing was right. They're bringing all these trucks in here and it's gonna ruin the place. And to a degree it does. Mm -hmm. It's not the nice, comfortable place. When you drive down any of the streets downtown, you don't have time to look at the trees and the flowers and the doors and the fixed up. But they did them then, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to that degree, to another degree, most of our livelihood came from manufacturers, Tyron Rubber, Syntec, and all these, uh, a lot of them. They're gone now. Mm -hmm. You mentioned names to people and they don't know what's what. I have a friend of mine who says, you can't even pay cash anymore at a restaurant where you need change because they don't know how to make it. I had a half dollar, mm -hmm. Kennedy half dollar. 
and I went, I took it out of my pocket and said, I'm giving this to the girl when I pay her up front. And this just happened the other day. Yeah, just the other day. And so I, and my bill ended with 76, something like that. And I gave it to her and she was counting it and stopped and looked and went over and talked to another girl. And she looked at me and I think she must have said, well, they're in here all the time there. It's got to be good. <laughs> she didn't know what a half dollar was. Wow. I come back, I said, do you know what that is? She said, no, I said, it's a half dollar. Oh, <laughs> that's sad. That's really sad. You just got to go to the Hamilton. Huh? Got to go to the Hamilton. Right. <laughs> yeah. They know what it is. Yeah. And you know the Hamilton was here when we moved here? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it was his uncle or his father that owned it before. But it was here. Yeah. It was, it's, it's bad to see. We don't have good restaurants in Carter. If we have one good restaurant, and I mean by good restaurants, even the type they have today, you know, uh, Red Lobster, mm -hmm. Olive Garden or something like that. It's a, it's a upper class, same thing. I think what he's trying to say is we miss Sunnyside, mm -hmm. Rillo's, Deer Lodge. Yes. We, we, met, we grew up and we had those places. They were sort of special places. Mm -hmm. They have good restaurants here in Carlisle. Yeah, they do, I mean, but they're but they're not. Most of them are diners. <laughs> no, the kitchen, all these around here are good restaurants. Well, but they're not what you remember, though. No, no, no. Yeah. no. We remember those other ones. We wish they'd still be here. Yeah, I'm actually. Uh, one of my colleagues, she she has fond memories of the, the Bolera house. Where is that? Oh Another my one? goodness. Yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think the Thai restaurant is where the Bel Air house used to be. What is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. just right down the street here. We remember George's sub mm -hmm. shop always being here. I could it still is here. Yep. That's well, one of the Isn't isn't there a store in there now right across from uh, Catacorny to across from the Hamilton. Oh, that, that used to be a hotel. Yeah, no, I know it's a juice shop, I believe. Yeah, it used to be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A nice restaurant. When I came to Carlisle, I uh, I was invited to a, a Christian men's breakfast. Hmm. And uh, that's that's where I met uh, who, who was it? Which was the attorney that? Anyhow, I met him. He's a guy that was a, was an attorney here, had a law office, and re-enlisted again to go back and fight in Korea. Never forget that. He'd been in it once and got in it again. Hmm. So, well, we've taken up a lot of your time. Well, no, actually, I, I have two questions, so I apologize. But um, you, you mentioned uh, the the men's Christian breakfast. I'm wondering, did you attend church locally, or? Yeah, uh, we've been. There's a church near us. Mm -hmm. A couple churches near us, really. But one that we got to, and it was just a little church working on. But when we moved here, I think we were going to Bethel. Yeah, we went to Bethel. Out in the Holly Pike. Okay. And actually, our oldest grandson, not our oldest grandson, our next grandson, now we have a granddaughters too, but the next grandson, uh, went to first grade out there, 
Oh, they have a school there now. There. They have a Christian academy there. Okay. Yeah, they, he, he went all his years, went to school, graduated, did excellent in school, went to Penn State and got some scholarships from wow. Penn State and, and uh, graduated. I'll tell you a quick story about her. She told him, she said, Nathan, you're going to college. You're going to run into a lot of things up there. I said, and you're probably going to meet the girl you're going to marry up there. And she says, don't be in a hurry. You've got four years to look them over, four years to pick out your... Okay, so Sunday after church, he said, I how about having breakfast with him? We were out there at the... He had only been at college for about three months. Yeah. And he brought two girls along <laughs> with him. <laughs> One of them he married. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, they didn't take your advice too much. They didn't wait. They hardly waited four years. But he got a good girl. And... Yeah. All right. Well, we've just been doing a couple projects with local churches, so I, I thought I'd ask. Well, ours is the, what's the name of our church? Now we're attending Bethany Evangelical Church out in the Petersburg Road. Okay. And, and it's not the one on the corner. you got to go back a couple miles. It's in a barn. Hmm. They bought the barn. They, they have plans to someday build a sanctuary there, but... They focus heavy on young people. Hmm. I just I don't know what we're doing there. You didn't tell anybody how old you are. <laughs> no. Nope. Trying to fit in. Trying <laughs> to fit in. Well, the last question I always ask is, um, is there anything I should have asked or that you want to mention before we end? You I'm, didn't ask me about the things, how did I think Carlisle changed? Oh, sure. I think the traffic is horrendous. Mm. I don't know who decided to put the bicycle things in the streets, mm -hmm. but when there's an accident on 81, which happens quite frequently, and these trucks start through, mm. it's horrendous. It's just horrendous getting around. That's the biggest change. Mm -hmm other than all these nice restaurants around our area closing, things like that. And the car shows, hmm. you know, all that is probably good for business, mm -hmm. but it just takes away from Carlisle a little bit of the hominess mm -hmm. or whatever. But the trucks, I can't deal with them. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people who feel similar. So 81, I don't, I don't, Go there unless I, I'm in the car and he just says we're going that way. So, uh, if I head towards 81, she'll say, "Lord, make him go a different direction." <laughs> <laughs> or please get us on and off safely. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really bad. But they say it's wonderful for and all the warehouses. If you venture on up that way towards Shippensburg and 81, mm -hmm. I can't believe all the warehouses. But to me, it sort of ruin, ruins Carlisle, but maybe that's just because I'm older and I knew what it was taxes. like. I knew what it was like before all that. Yeah. See, yeah. I don't know, so I guess in some ways, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah. you're used to it. You probably are just so used to it, it doesn't bother you. Well, I, I, I never knew what it was like before, so. But okay. they, they have a lot of, they have a lot of opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, number one, they bring in a lot of taxes. Mm -hmm. A lot of bare spots around that are being taxed a little heavier when they put a building on it. And, uh, but there's old buildings, decalapit buildings and stuff like that get moved out of the way for a newer building. Mm -hmm. And generally, the newer building brings in more money. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they have their taxes, but it's not that. It's the people that work there. Mm -hmm. People forget that 
I forget what percentage, maybe you'll know, but there's a pretty high percentage of businesses that are small businesses. Yeah, I think it's the majority. Huh? I think it's over a majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, it is over, it's 60, 70 percent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I read a thing that had two different things in it. It's, it was talking about uh, money, next, next generation in money. Mm -hmm. And it said then, now this was about 10 years ago, said then that, that after some surveying, they discovered that people that let money to their next generation mm -hmm. are, well, they lose control, of course, they're usually dead. But their money that they worked all those years to save is squandered in less than five years. Mm. He said, I don't care if it's a million dollars or a hundred million dollars, it'll happen. And, and I thought, that's sad, that's sad. I don't want to start fussing. <laughs> I, I, tell my, I told my kids, and they do a pretty good job of it, that uh, your number one job, your number one job in life is to teach your kids how to live mm. in life. And the best gift you can give your mother, since we have three boys, the best gift you can give your mother is to love your mother. <laughs> oh boy, sounds good. Well I'm not new. I've taken up enough of your time, so thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. It's, You're been, it's been a pleasure. So uh, I hope we didn't bore you too much. Uh, not a, the exact opposite. So I hope I didn't bore you. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Sure. <laughs>